This mouse has jet engines, so it must make you game faster, spreadsheet smarter, PowerPoint harder? Or is it just a mouse trap filled with cheese? Let's find out. So ever since EVGA got out of the GPU business, I've been learning more about them and becoming a little bit of a fanboy. But I'm also a fan of all things obscure, so my first EVGA purchase is the X20 wireless mouse. Sure, it came out two years ago, but I needed a new mouse, so you're going to get a video about it. Now obviously, first impressions, it looks cool. It's got these spaceship thruster looking things and lots of lights and buttons. But shiny things are often used to distract you, so I'm going to walk you through its features and my first impressions after about a month of use and let you decide. All right, in the box, of course, we find a mouse, the charging cable, user guide, the USB dongle to hook it up to your computer, and this USB-A to micro USB extension adapter. I'm not quite sure what this is used for yet. Features that the mouse comes with this cool magnetic cover on the bottom. It's not to replace the batteries. It's actually where you put the dongle. It'll connect to your computer via that dongle or Bluetooth, actually. It has seven programmable buttons, eight if you count pushing down on the scroll wheel, five different DPI sensitivity settings, and five different profiles you can program into this thing for those people with drastically different mousing needs between online shopping and gaming and three other use cases. One of the standout buttons though is this one with the crosshairs on it. This is the sniper button. When you hold it down, it drops the DPI to 400 for those subtle adjustments you need to make as a sniper in first person shooter games like Call of Duty or I guess Fortnite doesn't count, does it? I don't know. Now, just like every tech product you buy these days, it does come with an app, which you might initially roll your eyes at, but in this case, it's actually kind of useful. Let's take a look. Right when you open the app, it tells you the battery status of the mouse. I could not find anywhere on the mouse that indicates low battery or something like that. For each of the five profiles, you can customize all the keys to do whatever you want, including shortcuts of any kind. Also, you can assign what happens when you scroll the wheel forward or backward. I'm not sure what monster would think to do anything like that, but okay. You can change all the RGB colors, or in my case, turn them off, and I'll explain more on that later. For you hardcore gamers, you can calibrate the lift-off sensors for various surfaces you're on. I don't know what that would be needed for, but go for it. And you can even customize all six of the different DPI settings. Now, I know I said there were five, but the sniper counts as a sixth. That's that button right here. And you can even change the DPI for that. Now, for you super smart nerds, there's even a macro editor. I do not know what this means. Feel free to explain it to me in the comments. Now, it's pretty obvious I'm not going to use all this mouse has to offer. But some of you might. Alrighty, so I've been using this thing for about a month. Let's get into my initial thoughts. And by the way, subscribe, don't subscribe, I won't be offended. But if you wouldn't mind using the like buttons down there, just let me know how I'm doing. All right, so it's a mouse and a mouse is just fine. It connects, it clicks on things. Stop it, it's exactly what you'd expect. It's the programmable buttons that are actually the really handy bit. Now, I did have to disable one of them, this right here, because I kept accidentally pushing it with my thumb when I moved too quickly to the right. But other than that, they are great. I also disabled the RGB because the battery died after four and a half days, and with the RGB off, it lasted nearly two weeks, which actually may not matter to some since they were smart enough to design the charging port to treat the whole thing like a wired mouse when plugged in, which honestly... Why not leave it plugged in when using it and just unplug it when you really need that freedom of movement? You'll never have to worry about the battery. Also, this is where I figured out what that little USB adapter is for. You plug the receiver dongle into it and keep it in the charging cord when you're going wireless and then just unplug it, charge the mouse, keep using the mouse. You don't have to take up that extra USB port on your PC. That's valuable real estate. All right. 
Now for what we're all here for, gaming usage. Incidentally, I'm not a big keyboard and mouse gamer, but I do use it on some occasions, chiefly with the nightmare-inducing Alien vs. Predator, mainly because the xenomorphs are dicks and climb the walls, and quick aiming is a must. For this game, the adjustable DPI is extremely handy for dialing in your preferred movement speed. Game over, man! But for the very important sniper button that slows your aiming down, I thought I should test it out in a proper sniper environment. So, Call of Duty it is. And honestly, it's actually very effective. Great feature. Remember, I'm not a mouse and keyboard player, so it felt initially very foreign to me. But once muscle memory sets in, it's probably going to feel extremely natural and will drastically improve your sniping. All right, now for fitment, how it feels in the hand. The reason I even wanted a new mouse was because I'd been using the same cheapo one for the longest time and it finally started to crap out on me. But also, it's a flat angle, even across the whole top, and my wrist had to rotate even further than natural to use it. I've always assumed and read in places that that's less good because there's lots of mouse options out there that claim to be the ideal angle for the human wrist. But the idea of a sideways mouse always seems absurd to me. And I like that the X20 was sort of a midway half angle, which I thought would be a more natural angle. But honestly, not so much. Turns out for me, the more relaxed flat angle or completely sideways feels better at first because your whole palm is rested on the table. But it also turns out most of the time I tend to use my mouse in front of me, between me and the keyboard, which means my arm is crossed in front of my chest, making the midway angle actually perfect. Plus, and I think we can all agree, for more general usage, I think we all tend to use our fingertips to move the mouse around rather than cupping it with our full hand. So I think the ultimate truth is, with any new peripheral or interface that you're introducing into your PC experience or anywhere in your life, it's going to take some time for muscle memory to set in. So, bottom line, the features are dope, the price is right, I'm loving this mouse, I'm going to hold on to it. The RGB is pretty much useless and the five profiles do seem a bit extra, Although, literally as I'm saying that out loud, I guess drastically different mouse setups for very different kinds of games does make sense. So, go for it. If you have one, let me know what you think of my findings. If you get one, let me know what you think down in the comments there. Otherwise, thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Which one do you prefer? And some stranger approached me and I told him I was just an enthusiast. I'm not a certified technician of any kind. And he's allowing me to fix his laptop or attempt to. Hey, no, come here. Oh, I dropped something.